Hi everyone, welcome to Wellness. This is Dr. Ara Dillon from Welcome to Wellness, just welcoming all of you to our first um, live event in, it's been months now. Um, we've had a lot of people asking about nutrition at our office, so I decided that this is a perfect time to educate our members on how to eat properly, just because we've all been dealing with a lot of stress, whether that's um, related to COVID, related to work stress, other things in life, and it's had an effect on our health, as you guys know. Um, so this is going to be about a 20 minute presentation. If you have questions along the way, please feel free to email us, type them in the box, and we'll make sure we get to them. If I don't have a chance to answer the, que answer the questions today, I'll make sure I, I respond to you within a timely manner. So uh, welcome to Nutrition 101, everyone. So uh, we always, you know, when you come into our office, we always ask you, what's your big why? Um, and that's what the most important fundamental is. You have to really figure out, you know, what's the reason or why am I wanting to be healthy? So my big why and what anchors me are my children, my beautiful children. Um, they keep me motivated, they keep me on track. When I'm having days where, you know, I'm not feeling up to speed with being healthy or wanting to eat the right things, I think about my kids and it keeps me motivated because I want to be well for myself but for my kids as well and we always say that to other people as well when you want to help others and take care of your family you have to make sure that you're taking care of yourself so if you don't have a big why it's hard to have that anchor there and stay motivated for a lot of people including myself so the five fundamentals that we talk about at our office are again most importantly it always starts with mindset so you have to make a decision as far as your health goes, do you want to be healthy? Do you want to take the action steps to be healthy or do you want to be passive? So, you know, saying I know all of this and I've heard all of this is one thing um, and actually doing it is another thing. So you having that knowledge and not, not essentially choosing to do something with it is a decision as well. Um, if you have that mindset where you've decided, you know, I want to be healthy and this is the thing I want to continue to do forever, um, not just give me a quick fix, a lot of, I've had a lot of friends, a lot of people ask me, you know, how can I lose 10, 10 pounds fast? How can I do this fast? And I'll say, you know, you'll get the results you want, but do you really want to do the yo-yo dieting where you go back and forth? Um, and that's not recommended for your body. It's not good. It just, again, like we're saying, this is a lifestyle change. So it starts with having the right, right mindset. Um, obviously, nerve supply is important. Um, so we want to make sure your nervous system is functioning at its highest capacity. Because if you're eating these amazing foods, you're exercising, you're detoxifying, but your nervous system is not functioning like it should, you have blockage to the nerves that supply your digestive organs, you're not going to get the benefits of everything else. So I'll talk about that towards the end. For the members that, uh, for our members who haven't had family members checked, and we have some guests that have tuned in for this talk. What is your big why? Do you have an accountability partner, someone that you can count on to keep you on track? Um, that's really important that you want. Um, so, you know, are you committed to making a shopping list? Are you committed to meeting? wellness I was on the other side of it's right for me everyone stays on track and we're accountable to each other and that's what really helps me stay on track that has helped a lot okay so let's get right into it so I'm, I'm sure you've heard some of this so the three major dangers so number one problem is People have way too much sugar in their diet. Um, and sometimes, you know, I, I had someone today say, I, I don't eat sugar, I just eat sweets. And I said, every sweet is essentially sugar. So by that she meant, I don't take a tablespoon of sugar and eat it every day. But I said, anything you're eating, like, you know, the muffins, breads, um, granola bars, whatever you're eating, it's full of hidden sugars. And it has a lot of different names, uh, fructose, corn syrup, this and that, it's all hidden sugars. Um, that's a major problem because sugar causes inflammation everywhere in your body and inflammation leads to chronic disease. 
whether that's diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer. Um, another issue is that there's too many toxins in our foods. So there's stats out there that say that up to 80% of the food that we eat is genetically modified. So I know this myself when I um, go to a grocery store and I purchase an apple and I leave it you know, on the counter for three weeks. This is a conventional apple. If I leave it on the counter for three weeks, it'll look the same. So food, natural foods are, you know, they're meant to be composed. It doesn't make sense that it's maintaining that, that appearance um, for three weeks. So obviously it, it's genetically modified. And um, if you're consuming a lot of genetically modified foods, you have to think about all the toxins that you're ingesting and accumulating over time. Another big thing is that not enough people have good fats in their diet. So most people, and including myself, I used to think if I consume fats, it'll make me fat. That's not true. Every single cell in our body is made of a cell membrane that requires fats. And again, it's these good fats that our body needs. Um, our inability to metabolize fat is what makes us fat. So what we want to do is we want to revolutionize your diet. So number one, we want to clean up your carbs. So um, you can get all the right carbs from vegetables, essentially. Um, number two, we want to fix your fats. So making sure you're getting the correct fats, because again, they're essential. Number three is we want to perfect your proteins. So are you getting the right proteins? Are you getting enough? And number four, we want to trash the toxins. So we're going to get into some myths. Um, so a lot of people are, are saying this today. People say, I have bad genes. If my parents were sick, I'll suffer the same fate. And we used to believe that once upon a time, but now medical doctors are saying that 90% of your, your issues are related to lifestyle changes. So they're talking about exercise and diet specifically, and they're not even talking about getting adjusted, having your immune system uh, ramped up with your adjustments. Um, they're talking about diet and exercise alone. So they're saying only 10% of your problems can be accounted for by bad genes. Um, and again, I'm sure you've heard this as well, that your lifestyle, so what you eat, how you exercise, your mindset, the way your nervous system is working, is going to determine what genes turn on and off. So obviously we want the good genes being turned on and the bad genes being turned off. So another thing that a lot of people, a lot of people talked about, and I had this again today, is calorie counting. So I used to do this in the past where I would track my calories and I would say, okay, you know, I need a 1200 calories a day. And once I hit that, I've hit my goal, but I have a lot of flexibility as far as what I can eat, but that's not the right way to calorie counting is not what we want to do in order to be healthy. Um, another thing too is if you want to maintain this, like going down the road and being healthy, there's no way I personally would not want to be counting calories every day and keeping track of them. Um, so if you look at this again, so when you eat right, calories don't matter necessarily. So if you look at 22 almonds, it's equivalent to 153 calories, whereas 120 is equivalent to 150. So, you know, again, this is an easy choice for me to make. I, I take the almonds. And anybody that has seen me at the office, you know how many nuts I consume in a day. Um, but the Twinkie, again, that's not something like, I, that's not something I would choose. And, and now that you're gonna have these tools and, and understand this, you yourself will make better decisions. So, sorry, before I forget, um, it's not about the quantity. We don't wanna track the numbers. We wanna look at the quality of the food that you're eating. So what are you, what sort of nutrients are you getting from that Twiggy versus the almonds? Okay, so this is a stat about sugar. So this was alarming when I read this stat. So every year Canadians consume on average 156 pounds of sugar. So if you think about that, like I'm, you're consuming a full body size of me in terms of sugar. And that's, again, that's alarming, that's scary because sugar leads to inflammation, which leads to all sorts of illnesses. Um, and again, it's not just, oh, I don't eat cake, I don't eat this. It's all these scary hidden sugars, they're everywhere. Um, so if you think about, I, I don't drink pop anymore, um, but if you look at a Coke can, it has 40 grams of sugar. So that's eight tablespoons of sugar. So, you know, even drinking half of that, how much sugar are you consuming? That's 20 grams right there. So again, these are, this is not good. And, and um, even things like Coke Zero, Diet Coke, again, there's modified sugars in there. I'll talk about those more, but those are not recommended either because they still cause toxicity at the end of the day. 
So the top 10 reasons to avoid sugar. So again, it's the primary dietary cause of obesity. It increases the acid in your body. So you're more prone to getting sick, more infections. Inflammation, like we said, um, it raises cholesterol, the bad cholesterols. Um, it can cause, it's related to diabetes, heart disease. It, again, it promotes cancer. So cancer cells grow off of sugar. So we really want to stress that because every everybody has cancer cells in their body. When we're without cancer, our body can fight off the cancer. It has an immune system and the functioning to do so. But once you're diagnosed with cancer, your body has lost that ability to fight off those cancer cells. So this is what we, we get a lot of questions about this. And you know, when Splenda and, and um, artificial sweetener first came out, everyone was, I, including myself, I was excited because I thought this is great. You know, I can um, still get that sweet taste and this is better for me versus sugar. The reality is these artificial sweeteners, they're neurotoxins. So they're known to cross the blood brain barrier. And that's, again, that's alarming because these toxins are accumulating in your brain. So if you think about conditions such as dementia, Alzheimer's, and, and we know that's on the rise as well. This is, you know, if we can do something like avoid things like artificial sweeteners, then that's what we should do. So what's a good replacement? So I'm sure a lot of you have tried this. Stevia is a good replacement. That's the best replacement. So organic stevia that's made in Canada is what we recommend. Uh, we don't want this stevia that's made in China because again, it's, there's modification genetically modified. Uh, xylitol is another option. So it's a sugar alcohol. So it's not as good as stevia, but it's still better than refined sugars. So that's what I would recommend. I, I know that uh, one question that we've got, well, actually not got, but a lot of questions that we get around sugar, are, what about brown sugar? What about this syrup? What about, you know, so the thing is things like brown sugar, they're modified. So it's basically refined sugars that are burnt and they're brown. So I wouldn't recommend that. Um, We've been fortunate enough to have fresh maple syrup and honey. Our, you know, our amazing welcome wellness patients and members have actually brought those in for us. And those are things that I use as replacements. But again, I, I stay away from these artificial artificial sweeteners because they're no good. Um, okay, so another myth, fat makes you fat. So I covered this briefly. So again, the inability to metabolize fat is what makes you fat. Um, so bad fat, sugars, and inability to burn fat is what makes you fat. So let's talk about the good fats that we need versus the bad fats. So the good fats that are not altered by man, so not genetically modified and are natural, are extra virgin olive oil, uh, avocado oil, coconut, and you can see their raw nuts and seeds. Um, so a lot of good protein and omegas in those, real butter. So I, you can ask someone at home, I consume a lot of butter, um, raw butter. Uh, raw cheese and yogurt, so again, we're limited with where we can get that, but it is possible. Grass-fed meats, eggs and whole milk. So that's very, very important. Um, I'm gonna talk about this more, but we wanna make sure that our meat, poultry, anything we're having, seafood is wild or grass-fed because it's, otherwise it's heavily concentrated in toxins, which you're ingesting and accumulating over time. Um, so even with the fish, we want to make sure it's Pacific or wild uh, fish, such as salmon, small fish, sardines. Um, so there's a lot of factory farming for fish. And again, we don't recommend that organic farming because this, the fish are basically swimming in their feces. So over their lifetime, and again, that's essentially going into the fish and we're consuming that. So it's not recommended. So some bad fats. So again, this is what we see more and more of. Um, so I, I just got a question, specific question. So again, I'm going to get to that. And if I don't, I'm going to send you some more information about that. So bad fat. So we want to avoid hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated fats. Um, so cottonseed oil, soybean. So again, that's if you read ingredients on chips, what, you know, snacks, like even kid snacks, you'll see that there's a lot of these hidden vegetable oils. So we really want to stay away from using vegetable oil when we're cooking. Um, especially when it steams because it goes rancid. So when it goes bad and you're mixing it with the food, whatever nutrients you have are not really there anymore. So there's no nutritional value of using vegetable oil. So we want to avoid trans fats. So margarine, was, which was endorsed by the Heart and Stroke Foundation years ago, again, it's synthetic and it causes inflammation. Um, synthetic butters we don't want. And like I said, corn oil, canola oil, if you see organic 
canola oil, I, like I'm not even sure what that means because that's not even possible. So again, avoid those. Um, so if you look at ingredients like breads, crackers, cookies, and again, like I said, any kids snacks, it's, you know, it's piled up in there, which is really sad because if we're, our kids are fed this from day one, think of how much they're accumulating over their lifetime. So if you look at this picture here, so um, you can see there's margarine up top and there's butter on the bottom. So all the ants are going to the real food because these, you know, every there's, in, we call it innate intelligence in every single organism on this earth where it knows what it needs to do. So you can see the ants are consuming that butter, but they're staying, majority of them are staying away from the mar margarine. So um, the other day someone came in and they said, you know, I have a fruit tree in my backyard. And I said, that's awesome. Do you spray it? And they said, yes, um, because we don't want the holes in the apples. And I said, but you want to eat things that the bugs are eating because that's what real food is. So, you know, again, we want to choose organic for produce as much as possible. So um, if you feel like it's hard for you to get the good fats in your diet, we do have supplements. Some supplements are a great option. I can tell you more about these later on and, and uh, the discount that you'll get. Um, but again, you can get a lot of these in your diet. Okay, so problems. So this is what I was talking about. So sometimes people say, okay, having organic everything, produce, meat, like I can't afford that. It's really expensive. So what is the one thing I can do to get healthy in terms of food? So we always recommend buying grass-fed, um, free-range meat, organic eggs. That's what we always recommend because like we're saying, um, these animals over their entire lifetime from conception to the point where they're at the butcher or, or on our table, they're given antibiotics. They're fed other medications. They're fed a, a grain diet, which again, like we're going to discuss, grain is very inflammatory in nature. So if that's all they're eating over their lifetime, and you know, if they're supposed to take a few years to fully mature, but they're maturing in a fraction of that time, that's that's quite alarming because when we're ingesting that food, it's accumulating within our body. It's so highly concentrated and it's coming into our body. So we don't recommend conventional meat. We recommend the grass fed um, free range meat. And we're gonna send you a follow up email where we'll give you some information as to where you can go shop for these products. Um, so this is what I'm talking about, the toxic bioaccumulation. So you know, even things like if the grass, if you have to be careful because even if there's cows that are, you know, free range, but they're consuming grass that is sprayed, it's accumulating in their body over their lifetime. Um, even fish that are consuming smaller fish, but it's contaminated, you, you know, you have to pay attention to these. So what we always say is we want to make sure we know where our food is coming from. So Dr. Phil has personally visited farms and been to butcher shops where they tell us where the food is sourced from. So we know it's the cleanest food. I've done that myself. I always ask, I always ask. And people sometimes say, okay, you know, how do you know the organic produce is truly organic? And honestly, like I, I will look into it at times, but sometimes I say, I, I'm not sure. Like you're just gonna, you can ask them like where the source, the, about the source, where it's coming from. But, you know, I'm hoping that they're not lying about that. But again, organic is better. Um, and organic is the best, but non-GMO, so non, when it's not genetically modified, that's second best. So that's still better than conventional, any sort of conventional food. So we always say change animal products first. So have grass fed beef, free range chicken, wild fish, like we said, and natural sources of dairy. Okay, so this is another myth and I, I did have a question about this. So a big myth is, so again, this is related to fat, cholesterol causes heart disease. So again, cholesterol is required for us to function. So cholesterol is a precursor for any sort of hormone that is produced. So if we don't have enough cholesterol in our body, that's not a good thing. Um, so when I had um, blood work done, like my cholesterol was low and I was like, that's, that's actually concerning. Like I want it higher because I want to make sure I'm producing the hormones that I need. Um, so again, cholesterol itself is not an issue. It's the oxidation of the cholesterol which causes inflammation, which results in inflammation, which is an issue. Um, so I'm just gonna read off some um, functions of cholesterol. It creates hormones, like I said, and it's very important for neurological brain functioning. Um, it's good for healing and repairing. So I had a question again about the eating the egg whites versus the yolk. So again, I don't recommend, I don't recommend you eat eggs that are conventional because a chick, like, you know, the, ch the entire lifetime of that egg and the chicken is not, it's very toxic. 
So again, I wouldn't recommend that. But the thing is, if it's free range organic, then that egg yolk has some really good fat. So there's omega threes, omega sixes, omega nines. There's an ideal ratio, which I'm not going to get into much, but free range meats have the correct ratio. When the ratio is off, like with conventional meats, then it's inflammatory. So you have to have the right ratio of the right types of fats. So um, this is another myth here. So, so again, this is very confusing because Canada's food guide is it's so outdated. Like it's like when I was a kid, you know, I don't know how many years ago, like it's, it's looking very similar still, which I don't understand because one in two Canadians get heart disease. One in two Canadians have cancer over their lifetime. So things are getting worse. We, we're spending more and more money on research and being healthier, yet we're not getting healthier as a nation. So the food guide recommends five to eight servings of grains every day. And again, we're not recommending grains because grains themselves are inflammatory. So, you know, ancient grains, they were four feet tall. They were high in protein. They didn't have gluten. Um, they were actually healthy. So if you look at the modern wheat now, it's, it's much shorter. It's 70% of it is carbs, very high in gluten. So if you think of people that have celiac disease, IBS, leaky gut syndrome, all these issues are on the rise. We hear more and more of this every day. So again, it's, it's not a good thing. We're not getting healthier. Um, up to 70% of our immune system lives in our gut. So if our gut is doing that, functioning at such a low level, then what are we absorbing? Like there's nothing that we're absorbing. So if you absolutely need to eat wheat, and again, um, for some people it's okay, and others I don't recommend it, like diabetics, if you have certain conditions, and I don't recommend wheat at all, um, but if you do need it, like rye bread is okay because it's lower in sugar, buckwheat, sprout, and sprouted grains. So spelt bread is okay. So we're going to send you some information about this. So this is a dirty dozen and the clean 15 list. So dirty dozen, these are highly concentrated in pesticides. So these are foods you do not want to buy conventionally because Again, they're grown in pesticides over their lifetime, and when we're consuming them, all of that's coming inside of our body. Um, versus the clean 15, so these are usually things that have a, a thick peel, so avocados, pineapples, whatever. These are things that we can buy conventionally because let's face it, organic is quite expensive. So you know, just look at these lists when you go shopping and keep this in mind. So we have two plans: the poor plan and the advanced plan. So the poor plan is. Um, the basic plan. So again, this is good for health maintenance uh, and disease prevention. So this is for people that are, you know, typically healthy. You can have some grains. Um, you will get some weight loss, but that's not really what the goal is. And then there's the advanced plan. So this is for people that have comorbidities, so pre-existing health conditions. So this is good for hormone repair, um, inflammation and disease, like we said. It will help with weight loss um, and obviously restoring your health. So uh, Dr. Phil and I, between us, uh, we've helped over 300 people either modify their doses of medications or get off of medications with the help of their family doctor and pharmacist. So again, it's these lifestyle changes that have allowed that to happen, which is, again, we're really grateful that we get to serve our community. Um, so I'll tell you a bit more about the advanced plan. So like we said, three basic changes. You're basically going to eliminate all your bad carbs so grains, sugars, and even the fruits were really specific on what you can have. Berries, grapefruits, uh, Granny Smith apples, because we want to make sure you're not getting that spike in those sugar levels. Again, protein, we always want to replace with the natural protein sources, so the good meats. Um, and again, if, if that's something that's hard to do, then a protein supplement is a good option. Um, and then fats, so we want to remove bad fats and replace them with good fats, like we discussed. Okay, so we'll go into this quickly here. So label reading dues. So I'll just make this really simple. When you go to the grocery, and again, I was like, I'm not gonna do this when I first heard about this, but I actually enjoy doing it. You wanna read your labels. So if you look at this label here, um, it says organic roasted peanuts. So that's very easy to understand and basic. So the less words it has, the more whole it is, the better it is for us. So this is some good peanut butter. This is what we wanna look for versus, you know, Skippy here. So roasted peanuts, soybean oil, mel maltodextrin, if you're looking at an, an icing sugar, which you who would think that peanut butter has icing sugar in it. So again, hidden sugars. So we really want to pay attention to the labels. 
And um, someone just asked protein substitute, like a protein powder. So again, if you have the right supplements, like I drink a plant protein powder um, because I sometimes I don't want to consume meat. So that's something that I'll, I'll use as a, a protein replacement rather than the actual meat. And it's very clean, um, again, coming from grass fed sources or clean um, plants. So a lot of you that come into our office, you guys are, are on nutrition or not nutrition, but you're on wellness plans where you get a care package, a care plan, and we include these books in your package, at, le at least one of them. Um, so this has everything that I talked about. It's all in these books. So again, very basic and easy to understand. And it's easy for me to say that because I follow it now, but I can understand that, you know, I, I, I can understand that, um, it is difficult to make that change, but again, we're here to help you and guide you, and it is possible as long as you're committed. So as far as shopping goes, um, so you, it is going to take effort, time and effort initially. You have to plan your meals. That's the best way to do it. Um, and Dr. Phil always quotes someone else where he says, if you're not planning, then you're planning to fail. So make a list. Um, if you go to our website, welcome to wellness.ca, there's a lot of resources, a lot of easy recipes and good, and I'm not saying... Like, I'm not just saying this, but they're actually tasty recipes. It's good food. Um, that's another myth. People say, I don't want to eat healthy because it's boring. Um, it doesn't taste good. But once you actually educate yourself and you're, you know how to do this, you'll, you'll actually be really impressed. Like, I have patients that bring me recipes for healthy cookies. And I actually make them, and they're really good. And, I, and my kids like them. My family likes them. Um, so, again, we want to read labels. And we want to use the, the pesticide guide. So that's a dirty dozen and the clean 15. Um, okay, so now we're going to, we always have to educate you on the nervous system. So all of you that are coming into our office, again, you understand this. The brain controls the body by sending messages down the spinal cord out into all the cells and tissues. So in order for that to occur and work properly, your spine needs to look a specific way. Um, if for whatever reason you have misalignments in your spine, so this is referred to as subluxation, so you can see that there's a shift here and it's pinching the nerve. When that happens, your body is not going to have the ability to function at its highest level. So rather than building health, you're building disease. So if you look at this poster that we have, and I know it might be hard to see, but the nerves here, so right in here, these are the ones going to your gut. So if these are pinching, and your gut is not working the way it should, your stomach and certain organs are not functioning the way they should, all that good stuff you're eating and spending money on, you're not going to absorb it the way you should. So, you know, like we talk about Christopher Reeve all the time, Superman, he fell off of his horse, he fractured his vertebrae and he was paralyzed. So, you know, he, he could eat the most amazing food, um, he would, you know, he could do some exercise, but his nervous system was not functioning at its highest capacity anymore, so he didn't have his health. So we always say, you know, you know, your nervous system should be working at its highest potential. So when you're coming in getting your adjustments, we're removing that interference where there's nerve pressure and we're allowing your body to heal the way it's supposed to, um, work the way it's supposed to. So we remove that interference and your body is the one doing that healing. So if you, and, and this is for existing patients and people that have not had a chance to uh, come into our office yet, when you're having symptoms, you know, these symptoms have been building for some time and it's your body saying, wake up, listen to me, there's an issue, let's take care of this now, do something about it now. So if you are having symptoms, you know, it's not too late, you can do something about it, but get yourself checked. And, you know, if you're not in this area, in the Whippy area, reach out to us and we'll find a chiropractor that's local, that's somebody that can help you out. Um, again, because if you, you can't just guess, you can't feel this building up, you won't know until you actually have a checkup. Um, so for those of you that are, you know, in our, in our, um, in our um, presentation here, we're going to send you an email with a, a really good offer um, to, have an op to, to have the opportunity to have your nervous system assessed at our office. Um, okay, so that's that. We'll send you some more information about that. Um, I'm just going to do this really fast here. So these are those products I was talking about. So if you are going to find it difficult to get the nutrients from the whole foods, which is always the best, you always want real foods. Um, I prefer that you have real foods over supplements, but supplements are another option. So again, whey protein, we sell this. Um, you'll get that 15% discount. So again, this is from grass-fed cows. Uh, and this is what I really like, paleo greens. So this gives you, I believe, six to eight servings of vegetables in a scoop. So I mix this with my smoothies. I make my kids drink it. 
Um, and then there's all sorts of proteins. So we have proteins with bone broth. Someone was talking to me about that collagen. You know, people are really into collagen supplements. So bone broth is great for that. Um, other supplements that we have. So if you don't have enough good, so this is tough for vegans too. Um, if you don't have enough good fats in your diet, you can take an omega supplement. But we recommend that uh, everyone basically have a multivitamin. Um, probiotics are great for your immune system, vitamin D and omegas. Um, okay, so that's that's me going through that presentation really fast. So hopefully you guys can understand me just because I talk really fast, as you know. Um, so the next event that we have for, for all of you guys is that we're doing a Max T3 workout in our office. So we're doing that this coming Monday at 11.30 a.m. So this is going to be a 12-minute workout where we're going to um, we're gonna make sure we get the your heart pumping and burning those bad fats and uh, balancing your hormones. We're going to do all that good stuff. So you guys can sign up for that. And um, we will most likely have a live option as well, but I'll get back to you again. We're going to include that in the email. Um, so now I'm just going to go over some questions, even though it's been half an hour. So thanks for being patient, guys. So um, I'm just reading here what, what we see. So as far as Ken goes, Ken, I'm just going to send you an email and I'm going to talk to you about more of this in detail because it is more specific. And um, I'm sorry, I'm just reading the questions here. So somebody asks again, what are some good protein substitutes? And and I like just like I said, protein powder is great. Any sort of wild meat is great. And uh, we do sell these at our office. So you can go on our website and you can order them. Or next time you come in, just come in and you can you can pick them up. And again, you'll get that discount, which is fifteen percent of the products. So uh, someone wrote here as well. Breakfast is the toughest meal for me. What can you suggest that I eat that will sustain hunger? So again. Um, so what I typically, what I typically do for breakfast is I either have a protein shake with the maximum, the, the paleo greens, or I'll have something like eggs because the, the omegas, the right omegas keep me full for a long period of time. You can add some fruit, fresh fruit, frozen fruit, and then even some nuts. So when you're eating all that, you're going to notice you're fuller and you don't get that sugar spike. So a lot of people, they eat, you know, they eat cereal in the morning. And I used to do the same thing. I used to have Fruit Loops for dinner um, back in the day. Anyhow, my sugar is going to go up. And then as that sugar crashes down, you're going to get that, you know, you're tired and you have that fatigue. Again, if our kids are eating that cereal, the same thing happens when they're in school. So we don't, we want to stay away from a lot of those cereals. There's a lot of hidden sugars. Read the labels and see how much sugar is in there. Um, so the other thing I recommend is something even like Greek yogurt plain Greek yogurt. Um, I used to add frozen blueberries to it. I add hemp hearts, chia seeds, and I'd leave it in the fridge overnight, and then I would eat it the next day. Um, and the wild blueberries made it quite sweet. So I'm, I'm reading this as well. If you guys do have more, and this is Rebecca sending this, our office manager, if you do have more specific questions, you can email us at team at welcome to wellness.ca. You can go on our website. Um, you can submit questions on there. Um, and, um, I, th I, I think I answered some, most of your questions online. I have some, um, through text as well. So I'm just going to read those out really quickly here. Um, so again, so people say too, like, what about like inter one question we get is things like intermittent fasting. So again, this is, I can do a whole another seminar on this, but intermittent fasting is basically condensing the amount of hours that you're eating. And I don't recommend that right away because you're, if you're making all these big changes, that's going to be overwhelming. So you can get to that point. Again, when you're condensing your meals and you're fasting for a long period of time, you're burning any sort of carbs that you have in your diet, you're going to burn. Your body's going to metabolize things differently. Um, you're going to have less inflammation in your body. So that's something that we can discuss. And I'd be happy to discuss that with you individually. Um, but if, even if you condense all of your food into eight, you know, you go from, I used to eat over 12 hours, I condensed to 10 hours to eight hours. If you can do that, that's going to make a big difference as well. Okay, if, if anybody doesn't have any other questions, um, let me just check my text again. Sorry, guys. So, yeah, so again, people are asking me, where can I get this food from? And like I said, we're going to send you an email. Um, we're going to give you some resources as to where you can go to get the good food. Um, when you come into our office, you can ask us, you can ask any of our CAs, any of our staff is really, really educated on this. 
we all go to seminars and we're all trained and we'll be there to help you along the way. Um, if you have any other specific questions, you feel free to email us again, like I said. So team at welcometowellness.ca and uh, we'll answer those specific questions. I'll get back to a few people that had more um, specific questions and then we'll go from there. So again, please do sign up for our Max T3. It'll be this coming Monday at 11.30 a.m. And for those of you who want family members checked, you yourselves have not been checked, please uh, look out for that email. Give us a call and we'll make sure we get that checkup for you because we do have an amazing um, offer for you to have that checkup as well. So I'd just like to thank all of you guys for tuning in um, because I know that everyone gets quite busy in the evenings. So again, I appreciate you tuning in and I hope that you, you know, have at least the fundamentals on nutrition and, and I can motivate you to get on track with your nutrition and, nutrition and stay on track. So when I see some of you at the office again, I'm going to ask you what changes have you made. So thanks again. I hope you guys all have a good evening and I look forward to following up with you and getting some feedback from you. Thank you, everyone.